so we are starting with the swap section so even in the previous syllabus this section was generally the most difficult section for cf level 2 candidates and it is computationally intensive but not uh, not very difficult once you get hang of why it was done in a particular way so we would not take a single formula as it is we would derive all the formulas today and in fact we would look at multiple ways of approaching the same question so that you understand what is the concept behind this so the first section within swap is pricing of the swap pricing of a plain vanilla interest rate swap so we know a plain vanilla interest rate swap is where one party is paying fixed and the other party is paying floating now what pricing of swap essentially means in a very simple language it means finding out the fixed rate of the swap finding out the fixed rate of swap so when we said one party will pay fixed what what is going to be that fixed rate is it going to be 4% 5% 6% so to find out what should be that fixed rate is finding of the pri or pricing the swap are we already here now to do this we'll have to do a little bit of uh, background and i'm going to derive that formula in multiple steps so first concept with that procedure is that a swap is essentially okay, to be more specific an interest rate swap is essentially a portfolio of two bonds you will have long position on bond 1 and short position on bond 2 this is referred to as saying equivalence of swap with a portfolio of bonds so let's see how think of a swap where this gentleman pays 6% fixed and let's say he receives floating okay so floating let's call this is libor so he pays 6% fixed and receive floating for a period of 3 years so an notional amount let us say 1 million okay so what is the structure in this swap this is time 0 time 1 time 2 and time 3 every year he will have to pay assuming annual cash flows 6% of 1 million 6% of 1 million and 6% of 1 million and every year he will receive libor then libor and then libor depending on whatever libor turns out to be okay here i have kept the spread zero that means libor plus 0% now let us say for some reason you are struggling to find a counterparty to this transaction so for some reason you are struggling to find a counterparty for this transaction so you go to your financial engineering team and you ask them how can we replicate how can we replicate the cash flows of this swap using bonds okay so which means you want to build a portfolio in such a way that your cash flows would be exactly same as what cash flows otherwise you would have on the swap but this time you are going to do that with the help of bonds so what the team would recommend you is it will say take a long position on floating coupon bond and then take a short position on fixed coupon bond this fixed coupon should be 6% and this floating coupon should be libor so now see what happens so this is time 0 this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 first you are buying a bond so when you are buying a bond you will have to pay market value of that floating coupon bond today do you agree with me if you are buying that bond then you will have to pay market value of that bond today and then every year you will receive 
LIBOR and LIBOR and LIBOR and on the date of expiry you will also receive face value and how much should be the face value of this bond? The face value of this bond should be 1 million which is equal to notional price of the swap. In the same fashion sell a fixed coupon bond short position means selling a bond being a issuer so here you will receive the market value you will receive market value of fixed coupon bond why because you are selling the bond so you are supposed to receive market value but the fact that you have sold the bond every year you will have to pay the coupon how much 8 6 percent 6 percent and 6 percent and this is where you will also have to pay the, pay the face value now because the face value in both the cases is going to be same receive face value and pay face value so technically these cash flows are eliminated because the cash flows of these two structures is exactly same but there is no initial cash flow required at the inception in the swap if there is a differential in the market value then it opens up an arbitrage opportunity isn't it and therefore this market value has to be exactly same as this market value so I am not saying that the market value would be equal to face value it could be anything but the market value has to be same if not then any party will enter into the swap and enter into this portfolio bonds and enter into opposite side of the swap because the remaining cash flows are the same they will end up earning an arbitrage and to ensure that the to ensure that the arbitrage is zero I mean there is no arbitrage these two market values are going to be same he said if both the market values are same then LIBOR should be equal to 6% LIBOR is a floating rate it will change every year so this LIBOR here would be determined on this date so this is LIBOR 1 this LIBOR would be determined on this rate and this LIBOR would be determined on this rate okay so LIBOR is a floating rate it's a floating rate we do not know it in advance but I'll tell you a scenario think of it this way let us say that this is worth 1020 and this is worth 1000 are you receiving more yes how much 20 net so what you do is simply go on to swap and enter on to opposite side so the transaction of swap and portfolio bonds will automatically nullify and you would get to keep that 20 with you so the only scenario in which that arbitrage would be prevented if the market values on both the sides are same and later on I'll prove you this mathematically as well about why the market value is going to be equal to face value so the market value would remain same and therefore you are able to replicate the cash flows on a swap exactly using cash flows on a swap using portfolio of two bonds do you want me to repeat this again have you understood this if this is 1020 and if this is 1000 then what you do is you enter into this swap how much do you have net 20 you take this home then you go to the swap dealer and you tell him that I want to enter into this swap as receive fixed pay floating so every year you will receive how much 666 you give that on the swap and every year on the bonds you will receive how much LIBOR 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 you give that on the you give that on the swap so that these all the future cash flows are eliminated you get to keep 20 with yourself so if you if you want to prevent the arbitrage that will happen only if the initial cash flow at inception is zero and that initial cash flow at inception would be zero if this price and this price is going to be how is that six percent determined that is what we are trying to do that's why we are trying to build this is the price of the swap this six percent this is the price and then how do we get that six percent is what we are trying to build in this so what you learn out of this is that a swap is equal to portfolio of bonds but one of the bond is going to be fixed coupon other bond is going to be a other bond is going to be a no, no one of the bond is fixed coupon other bond is going to be a floating coupon one of them is going to be your asset and other one is going to be your 
liability. So write this down quickly. Done writing? Okay, so again, I'm still on point number one. What did we learn from this? If you're a fixed rate payer in the swap, then this position is equivalent to having long position on one bond and short position on the other bond. How to determine which one? So you ask yourself, what am I paying, fixed or floating? Here you're paying fixed, so that's a liability. So short on fixed coupon bond. And what will I receive floating? So you're long on floating coupon bond. In the same fashion, when you have a fixed rate receiver bond, fixed rate receiver, then what will I receive and what will I pay? So you're receiving fixed rate, that means you are long on a fixed coupon bond. And what are you going to pay here? Floating rate, so you're going to be short on a floating coupon bond. Okay, so the only thing that we've learned is that cash flows of a swap could be replicated by building a portfolio of bonds. The leg two of the derivation. So let us say there is a plain vanilla interest rate swap. We have two parties, which is a fixed rate pair. And of course the counterparty has to be a fixed rate receiver. So fixed rate pair and fixed rate receiver. Now, a fixed rate pair is going to give in a way one bond to the fixed rate receiver. Which bond is going to that going to be? Tell me. Is that going to be a fixed coupon bond or floating coupon bond? Fixed rate pair is going to give what to a fixed rate receiver? A fixed coupon bond a fixed coupon bond and a fixed rate receiver he is in a way giving one bond to the fixed rate pair and which bond is this a floating coupon bond right that's how essentially the structure is that you are issuing a fixed coupon bond and you are receiving a floating coupon bond now this is happening at time zero when the transaction starts okay Imagine now, and I hope you're listening to me carefully. If this bond is 1020, and if this bond is 970, will this person enter into the swap? If this bond is 1020, and this is 970, will this, let's call them X and Y, will X enter into the swap? No. Why? Because he's giving an expensive bond, but he's receiving a cheaper bond. And if this is if this is 970 and this is 1020, will Y enter the bond and will Y enter into the swap? No. So the only scenarios in which they will be willing to enter into a swap if value of both the bonds is same, correct? So what we say is if value of both the bonds is same, that means value of swap at inception value of swap at inception has to be zero. None of the parties should really be profiting just by signing the agreement. Because if you are profiting just by signing the agreement, the other person will never sign it. Which means at inception, at inception, the value of fixed coupon bond has to be equal to the value of floating coupon bond. Any questions here? Yeah, value means the market value, I mean, which is same as the intrinsic value in this hypothetical scenario. So we've seen two things so far. Number one, a SOP is essentially a portfolio of bonds, one long, one short. Second, at inception, both the bonds has to be valued same. That's why your portfolio is going to be zero. So think from fixed rate payer perspective, he got an asset and he got a liability simultaneously. What is his asset? His asset is the floating coupon bond, which is worth 1000. And what is his liability fixed coupon bond, which is worth 1000. 
so valuation is going to be zero. In the same fashion, asset plus liability, thousand and one thousand, and therefore value of the portfolio, which means the value of swap is going to be zero. Are we okay? Third leg in the derivation. Now this is subject to certain conditions, but we'll discuss about those conditions later. On every reset debt, you can write this with me. On every reset debt, a floating coupon bond. On every reset debt, a floating coupon bond should reprice to par. On every reset debt, a floating coupon bond should reprice to par. For ease of understanding, let's say one thousand. So now observe. Let's say this is a four-year bond. Let us say we are looking at a four-year floating coupon bond. Okay. Let us say that this floating coupon bond pays only LIBOR. I am not adding any spread to it for the time being. So this is time zero. This is time one. This is time two. This is time three. This is time four. Let us say today we are here. Today we are on time three. Now you want to value the bond, so you open up your CFA Level One books and try to find out that formula which says that value of a bond is present value of all the future cash flows. So you are sure that cash flow here is going to be one thousand because that's where the bond matures. Plus, the bond is going to pay you some coupon, but now it's a floating coupon bond, so the coupon keeps on changing. But what we know is that whatever was the interest rate that existed in this period, that is the coupon I am expecting to receive, and the interest rate that existed in this period was determined on this date. So if this date was five percent, if this rate was five percent, then your coupon becomes. Fifty. If the rate of LIBOR on this date was seven percent, then the coupon becomes seventy. So let's assume we are in a five percent scenario. So value of a floating coupon bond, present value of future cash flow. What cash flows are we looking at? Thousand and fifty. And thousand and fifty you would discount using what rate? The current rate in the market. The current rate in the market that's applicable to the riskiness of the bond, and what is the current rate in the market? Five percent. So divided by one point zero five. What's the market value? How much? Thank you very much. So this would be thousand. But what if, what if it is not fifty? It is seventy. Divided by one point zero seven. What would be market value? One thousand. Which means no matter what. we have been able to prove no matter what happens in the market on a year before the maturity the bond price is always going to be trading at 1000 and why because we simply learned the concept of par bonds at level 1 what we said for par bonds is that a bond will trade at par if coupon and ytm is going to be same and in this bond that is the mechanism whatever is the ytm that automatically becomes coupon Are we okay here? Now let's find out what would be the value of the bond at year two. Let us say year two the rate is eight percent. Value of a bond is present value of future cash flow, but in year two we do not know what would be the coupon in year four. Do you agree? But what we know is that in year three the bond market value has to be one thousand. in year 2 we do not know what would be the coupon in year 4 but we know that bond market value is going to be 1000 so we'll sell the bond hypothetical assumption we will sell the bond and this will give you us give us a coupon of how much 80 so value of the bond is present value of future cash flow 1080 divided by 1.08 so here the market value of the bond is going to be how much 1000 let us say this coupon was 12% so here the cash flow is 1120 divided by 1.12 market value 1000 and here 
if this was 8 percent or let's say 9 percent then 1090 divided by 1.091000 1 which means on each of these reset dates the bond price is going to be equal to its face value have you understood this and you don't need to know mathematics to understand this a par bond is a bond where coupon and ytm is same with this bond that is how automatically it will happen in the market whatever is the current rate in the market that becomes a coupon for that year so bond will always trade at par so it will trade at par on these date not necessary in between but on the reset date it would be at par subject to certain conditions which we will see later on this is coupon 120 and this is coupon 90 we are not assuming it will be at par in year 3 the bond in year 3 has to be at par subject to certain conditions there is no reason why it should not be at par it will not be at par if the spreads have changed okay but i don't want to go in there today but as long as the credit spread remains same for the bond there is no change in credit rating <coughs> the ytm in the market and the coupon rate is going to be same correct and it, it kind of becomes a one one year coupon bond then do you agree with me when you're at year three it is going to be simply a one year coupon bond and coupon rate and ytm is going to be same so the bond has to trade at par now when we valued here you might as well argue that i don't want to sell the bond in year three correct but what we know is that present value of all the future cash flow after three year, year three gets captured in this 1000 so even if you don't sell you still use the same logic and value the bond should we go ahead then so let's integrate all the three points so step number one a swap is essentially swap is essentially two bonds one position one bond you will have long position one bond you will have short position number two value of swap at time zero is going to be zero which means at time zero value of fixed coupon bond should be equal to value of fixed coupon bond should be equal to value of floating coupon bond are we okay but rule number three said is that on reset date on reset date floating coupon bond value of floating coupon bond is going to be equal to par which means time zero is also a reset date so at time zero this is going to be at par do you agree when the swap starts is that a reset date when the swap starts is that a re reset date for floating coupon bond so on this date this bond has to be trading at par and if that is the case then hence prove that even this bond we have to be ensuring that this is trading at par so going back to the previous example okay so this is party x this is party y x was offering y which which bond were we looking at a fixed coupon bond and y was offering x a floating coupon bond okay now listen to me carefully we're hitting the point now so this is time zero so we know that market value of this bond is going to be 1000 assuming that's the face value are we okay with this what should be the market value of this bond market value of 1000 is that okay now x is asking a question to y that what is the coupon that i should pay to you on this bond is that okay y says pay me coupon in such a way that the bond gets priced at 1000 so what x does is x goes to market and find out what are the current spot rates 
okay because to value the bond what we need is the spot rate so year 1 year 2 year 3 year 4 i am intentionally going to use large numbers here 10 percent 11 percent 12 percent and just to kind of exaggerate let's say this is going to be about 18 percent these are the spot rates so what x says is that value of the bond is present value of future cash flow so i am going to pay four coupon coupon one plus coupon two plus coupon three plus coupon four plus i am going to pay one thousand the first coupon should be discounted at 1 plus 10 percent the second coupon should be discounted at 1 plus 11 percent the third coupon should be discounted at 1 plus 12 percent fourth coupon 1 plus 18 percent and 1 plus 18 percent this should be raised to 1 raised to 2 raised to 3 rest to 4 and rest to 4 and present value of this cash flow should be how much 1000 so what C needs to do now it says find I mean what X needs to do find that C find C in such a way that the equation is satisfied that means bond market value is going to be equal to 1000 so observe now I'm going to simplify this a little bit instead of using 1000 I'm going to replace that with 1 okay just so that it becomes relatively easier for us to handle and instead of saying 1 divided by 1 plus 10 percent I'm going to call this as a discount factor let's say z1 are we okay so 1 divided by 1 plus 10 percent would be z1 1 divided by 1 plus 11 percent rest to 2 is going to be z2 so on and so forth so the revised equation is like this 1 is equal to c into z1 z1 being simply the discount factor are we together on this plus c into z2 plus c into z3 plus c into z4 if you observed i am not saying c1 and c2 i am just saying c because all the coupon amounts are anyways going to remain same plus now this 1000 will become 1 1 multiplied with z4 now we can take c common from this equation so we will say 1 is equal to c is common so that's z1 plus z2 z2 plus z3 plus z4 plus z4 make sense is it making sense yes or no and then let us solve for c i'm short of space so i'm going to have you written the three points so let me use this space okay so we can shift the z4 on the other side so we will say 1 minus z4 and we can shift this multiplication factor in the denominator of the equation on the left hand side divided by z1 plus z2 plus z3 plus z4 that's going to be equal to c this is the formula for price of a swap and what it simply means is you find out that coupon rate in such a way so that the bond is trading at par and if the fixed coupon bond is trading at par floating coupon is anyway trading at par so value of the swap will become zero. 0 is that okay so let's see if that works for us in fact you write down this part first and then then we will solve remaining part together assuming you're done with this how do we get those discount factors so z1 is going to be 1 divided by 1.1 so that's 0.9090 Please cross check on your calculator z2 is 1 divided by 1.11 squared that's going to be equal to how much 8116 I parallelly please save this number in the first memory slot of your calculator sto1 and do it with all the decimals if you've lost the decimals do it again 1 divided by 1.1 put that into sto1 
1 divided by 1.11 square put that into second memory slot then 1 divided by 1.12 raised to 3 point 0.7 7 double 1 again 7 double 1 7 put this into third memory slot and the fourth discount factor 1 divided by 1.8 raised to 4 5 1 5 7 this goes into fourth memory slot then we make use of this formula and we just do a plug and play here so you will say 1 minus 0 0.5 1 5 7 which is the fourth discount factor divided by bracket open 0 0.9090 plus 0.8116 plus 0.7117 plus 0.5157 and that will be equal to now at L1 you had learned the same concept but instead of calling this as a swap rate we call this as the par rate so par rate and swap rate are the same concepts that coupon rate which will force your bond to be priced at par value now let's cross check if this works let's cross check if this works assuming 16.4 is correct so your coupon rate would be 16.4 percent of 1000 that's going to be 164 164 164 164 and then 1000 let's discount and let's check if it works see now you already have this discount factors in your memory slots are we okay so you will say 164 into rcl1 that's the present value of first coupon put that into let us say fifth memory slot then 164 into rcl2 7 164 into rcl3 8 164 into rcl4 and that will go into ninth plus 1000 into rcl4 again or alternatively you can take 164 common so let do this with me i'll show you how it works so anyways you want to take present value of 164 for four years so 164 is common you can just add up the discount factor so 164 multiplied with 164 multiplied with bracket open rcl1 plus rcl2 plus rcl3 plus rcl4 bracket close equal to is this the answer no this is the present value of four coupons plus bracket open plus bracket open 1000 <coughs> plus bracket open 1000 into rcl4 bracket close equal to is it coming to 1000 so we basically calculated that coupon rate which in current market environment will force the bond price to be equal to its par value and fixed coupon bond has now come to par floating coupon bond is anyways equal to par and therefore value of the swap became zero have you understood the derivation now as far as your exams is concerned you don't need to know anything out of this last 30 minutes what you need to know is this formula okay so the reason why we had such long story so that you understand how that formula was derived are we doing okay with this